Hey everyone, it's Scott with Dallas Sound Guys. Today I want to talk about the piece of gear that I think I use more than anything else, this combination, this rack that I put together, which has the Behringer X32 rack, as well as the Axient, uh, it's the AD4Q. I just call it an Axient Quad, as it's a four channel microphone receiver. Uh, some quick backstory that I had used the um, Mackie 1402 analog board for years. I needed a little bit more control uh, that I went to an Allen and Heath MixWiz 16.2 because it gave me a sweepable mid on the EQ on every channel. Thought that was fantastic. Mackie came out with the DL1602, I believe it was called. It was iPad based. And for me, it was revolutionary because it let me put an EQ on the output. I didn't have to fix every individual channel because of uh, maybe the PA system I was using or something along that. I was able to make a change on an output, which freed up control on each channel. Thought that was incredible. And then about 10 years ago, I came across the X32 and it gave me so much more of what I was looking for, things I didn't even know I was looking for to be able to control. And that's what I have in this. Um, in this case in particular, I'm able to fly with it. I don't have to drive, and it gives me most everything that I need. It gives me control in a digital mixer, as well as four amazing channels of wireless, which by now, it's so difficult especially in Dallas, Texas, uh, in Orlando, where I'm at often, used to be in Las Vegas a lot, so in New York City, some of these bigger spots where so much wireless is happening that when I used the Shure ULXD, uh, I was in the G50 band, I had a certain amount of bandwidth, and uh, the H50 is another very popular bandwidth for the ULXD, the Axient, gives you both of those. So in essence, it gave me twice as much available wireless frequencies that I'd had in the past. Um, in that when I'm scanning for a clear channel, it just gives me a much better chance of finding four frequencies that aren't being used. Super handy, really helps my clients out a lot, really helps my events that I have all the confidence in the world, whether it's a small or a larger event, that I'm gonna be able to find four wireless frequencies. Does the client need to know this? No, but they just need their microphones to work with no dropouts, no issues, no problems. Uh, we're gonna get into a conversation at some point about the antenna choice that you can use. I had a real world example of that and how that could even help uh, with the, the frequencies that I'm using to ensure that, uh, that there's just no dropouts, uh, that I don't have to worry about competing wireless microphones in the area. The X32, man, I tell you what, uh, the, the things that it seems like that I'm doing when I walk into a venue, uh, once I get everything uh, uh, set up, is that I'm going to try and ring out the microphones so that, uh, boy, I'll do another video about this as well. If someone that's presenting isn't staying in one place on the stage, but they start walking around the room, uh, I need to know that I'm okay with the f having the flexibility that they can walk in front of a PA system without feedback, that I've already taken care of that issue. Again, it's just another thing that, and my client and all their attendees at a corporate conference, they don't want to hear any of that. They don't want feedback. Uh, and there's things that I can do with this digital board that are going to give me the best chances possible of never experiencing feedback, never having that type of problem. I have a lot of presenters, some are quiet, some are loud, some are both during their presentation. That with compression on channels and compression on the main output or on different outputs, we can get into that another time, that I can, I can raise the volume of their quiet parts as well as bring down uh, the volume automatically through compression when they start getting really excited and speaking to give a much more even flow. So I'm not riding the volume up and down and up and down where you can't hear them or it's way too loud. Uh, it, it's, it's incredible what you're able to do with this board. Absolutely love it. Uh, this is the X32. It's been out forever. Uh, and I'm sure that I know there's a lot of 
the different uh, brands and manufacturers that make digital boards. I'm just saying in my use cases uh, that I'm, I'm quite familiar with these products and boy, they're a huge solution. Uh, when I run into um, potential problems that this gives me answers um, to help my clients have the, the type of show that they're looking for, no issues. They need multiple microphones. Everyone needs to hear them clearly. Perhaps it's being sent to a live stream. It's being sent to a Zoom call. It's being sent in the room. It's being routed in all these different places. And I can make that happen uh, with this combination. I'm actually uh, just absolutely thrilled to have it and to use it and to offer it. So once again, here we go. Today, just wanted to show you the rig that I use most of the time. Uh, now in operating this, I do need to use an iPad. If I really, really had to, with no iPad, I can control audio from the front control. It's a little cumbersome. You have to have a lot of practice with it um, to be able to do that. It is possible, but you want to use an iPad with this. Now, there are some other devices that you can connect to this. Uh, I do have the uh, Behringer, um, oh goodness, what's it called? Is it the One Touch? It's a, uh, um, it's a, it's a touch device. It's the X-Touch. It's a, it's a set of faders that I can put into a, networked to, a network to communicate with the X32 so that I do have faders and that's possible. But instead of making things over complicated, that's a case where I would much rather just bring in my Midas M32R. Sometimes it's not even just about the faders, but I need to have dedicated mute buttons. I need to have my fingers on physical faders or buttons to make a show happen. Otherwise, for the most part, if, if there's not too much going on um, and I can control things, if it's convenient to co control things with an iPad, then I'm certainly happy to bring in the X32 rack that I have in this setup. I mean, again, the majority of the time, it seems like this is what's necessary to bring in. Another thing about a digital board, and this happens with this all the time, is that I'm able to save um, my show as a scene in that what I've created or maybe I've used one year with the client if I'm flying in and I can't bring this but I'm able to use someone else's Behringer X32 or minus Midas M32 board I always keep my thumb drive with me and all of my shows and so I can show up somewhere um, anywhere connect my USB drive call up my previous shows that I've used or whatever I've saved for this and it either gives me exactly what I need or a good starting point that I have all of my channels and my settings and my parameters and my routing and everything is either ready to go or I'm like 95% there and I just have to tweak uh, for that particular event so hey thanks for tuning in and listening to what I have to share about this uh, if you're using something similar maybe something different I'd love to hear from you as well uh, please like the video, leave a comment, and I'd like to hear some of your use cases, what's been working for you or what hasn't been working for you that you're looking for a solution, and we can keep the conversation going. So you take care, have an awesome day, and we'll talk with you soon.